The morning sun shines on the gleaming hide of a muscular ranch horse. The aroma of bacon and coffee drifts from the wood cook stove at a cow camp. Silver spurs jingle as the men and women of the West get set for another day in the saddle. From the heart of Canada's finest ranching country, this is the Spirit of the West with rancher and horse trainer Hugh McLennan and his collection of music, poetry, and conversations with the folks who live and work with horses and cattle in the Spirit of the West. Among a real working cowboy's most prized possessions are often his wife, his horse, his dog, and his custom-made saddle. In my case, quite a few years ago, my wife Billy surprised me at Christmas with a certificate for a custom-made saddle from our good friend Bob Goffman. It was up to me to spec it out, the type of tree, the length of seat, what kind of rigging, and so much more. And I'll tell you, I was floored. But I've ridden that saddle for a lot of years now, and this week, you'll hear Bob Kaufman and I not only talking about the saddle he built for me, but lots of other cowboy adventures too. I tied hard and fast the first little while, especially on a colt, but I had a colt that jerked right down off his feet one time, and I decided that maybe wasn't a good idea. And you were still tied on. Oh yeah, I was still tied on, and it was just a good thing I bailed out of there. Baxter Black will be along to take an insightful look into the foundation of the cattle industry, the purebred breeders. Granted, purebred breeders can be narrow-minded. They can be traditional and protective, but it is they who have given the cattle industry the engine and the running gear. And one of several notable items on the Rangeland News this week. Tractors are responsible for almost half of the fatalities of young children on farms. A Facebook social media romance between a country girl and who she thought was a big successful cattle rancher makes the Cowboy Poetry Spotlight this week and another beautiful classic, Song of the West, and the story behind the song and on the Urban Saddles and Western Wear horse training file, some savvy ideas I picked up at the Horseman's Reunion in California a few years ago. Things get started with three brothers from Montana, and they're up for some big awards at the Western Music Association's annual gather in November. But not only are they great musicians, but they're good hands with horses and cattle. These are the High Country Cowboys. <laughs> It's a chilly breeze blowing from the north Say the winter's coming on Keep the cattle moving onward Head for the railroad line There's a fire waiting for us there If we make it there on time Work the tie Before it starts to snow As we drive them down the valley Then the railroad comes inside We'll bet them down outside of town They will keep them for the night And with the daylight's dawning We'll load them in the pen Collect our pay and start our way Back home once again whoopie tie yo doodle doodle do Keep the cattle moving on whoopie tie yo doodle doodle We'll be there before long And I know that someone's waiting Come back soon Roll on your little pony While I sing a merry tune I'd been really enjoying my custom-made Bob Kaufman saddle. Bob paid us a visit here at the ranch, and I was really happy to tell him how much I liked it. Well, that's great, Hugh. I, uh, I actually, I, it was a pleasure to make it for you uh, because I knew you before and stuff too. 
and I knew it was going to get used, and there'd be lots of people to see it and stuff. That's the hard part, you know, when you get a brand new custom-made <laughs> saddle, is the first time you, you have to rope something with it, again, you know, and yeah. scuff it up a little bit. Yeah, they all get that way. In fact, uh, I built a couple of new saddles for myself over the years, and same thing, you look at them and then finally put them on a horse, ride them a little bit, but the first time you really put it to use, the first scratch or the first nick or something in it, you always think, oh dear, it's not new anymore. Yeah. When you display them at a trade show or someplace, though, all the saddles you have on display just look so you really get them cleaned up nice. Are, are those usually, have they been used and then cleaned up, or is that the way you try to keep them, the ones you display? Um, usually I try and keep them that way. Uh, what I normally do uh, is uh, about twice, maybe three times a year, I'll clean them up real good with uh, glycerin saddle soap. Uh, I only use olive oil on instead of Neat's foot. Uh, so I'll put a light coat on and stuff, and sometimes if I want to really polish it up, I use uh, kind of a Propert's uh, boot cream, oh, something yeah. that's got uh, some Carnauba wax in it and stuff, and it really shines them out and makes them look good. That's what makes them really, really shine and stand out then. Yeah, it is. Yeah, you bet. Well, it scare the cows when they see it. If <laughs> it was that shiny. <laughs> that's right. Oftentimes, uh, uh, after I've cleaned one up, I hate to go put it to use again, too, because especially like in our country, it gets uh, dusty. Yeah. That uh, dirt and dust, and it just grinds right into the leather, and even underneath gets underneath the skirts and the rigging and stuff. So, yeah. you make a lot of saddles for working cowboys, and uh, the one that uh, you made for me probably is a little different than some of them. I know a lot of guys, uh, working cowboys, like a wade tree, but uh, what 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 do you call the tree that you did mine on? Well, yours is a modified uh, Llewellyn tree, so it's got some swell uh, to the fork. And I'd say really, as far as an all-around kind of a ranch cowboy saddle, it's probably as nice a tree, a nice a, a saddle as you could you'd get that way. Uh, some guys uh, have gone to these wade trees or slick forks. There's Weatherly's and 3B's, and there's not much, uh, if any, front end to them. And it's more of a style um, and personal preference, really. So I've made uh, probably over the years uh, more saddles of uh, your style probably 60% than I have on the, the wade. Mm -hmm. But it seems like a lot of the younger cowboys are, are wanting the slick forks because it's more of a uh, something that's in fashion now. Yeah. And they, they do make nice saddles, but a lot of guys will put buck and rolls on and stuff too then after. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was, uh, like you say, an all-around saddle. I, you know, I'm going to spend a lot of long days in it at times, but I do have a fair amount of roping to do once in a while, everything from healing calves at a branding to doctoring big cows in the opening, so it had to be... You know, the swell is not so big that it's going to be in the way of my rope, but big enough it'll hold me in on a colt, and then a horn that'll work right for dallying or tying off to, and it seems to be just about right. Well, that's good, Hugh, because, uh, you know, when I, I remember when I first talked to uh, Billy, she phoned up, she was real excited about uh, getting something that she always wanted, to, you know, a saddle made just for you and stuff. And I thought, well, this would be a real pleasure. And then uh, Billy said, well, he'll have to pick the tree, and I thought, gee, I wonder what he'll pick. And... Uh, you know, it turned out that I kind of try and envision in my mind what uh, the saddle should look like after I get the tree or even before I even order the tree and stuff. And uh, just uh, after talking to Billy, I kind of thought uh, right off the bat, I, I kind of had an idea what you might order as far as the tree and what it might look like. And I think what you do have really is what I'd call an all-around cowboy saddle mm -hmm. that uh, you could use for anything. should be a good seat to ride colts with, and I know you ride lots of horses and stuff. When we come back, one of those songs that uh, crosses all the demographic lines. It would fit the format of nearly any radio station. And the conversation with Bob Kaufman continues when the Spirit of the West continues right after this. Welcome back to the Spirit of the West. I think you're really going to like the next song coming right up after more with the guy who built the saddle I ride in every day, Bob Kaufman. Well, there's all kinds of decisions to be made <clears throat> when you spec out the saddle because you're going to have to live with those decisions for a long, long time. And uh, I'd never had a saddle with plate rigging before, but I'm really glad you recommended that. Yeah, uh, normally I, I don't r like to recommend uh, what a customer uh, wants to order. What I normally try to do is, is go through what kind of a saddle uh, they like in terms of how it would look. Uh, what they're going to use the saddle for. And then if I do give any advice or recommendations, it'd be based on what may work better for them, uh, with the customer's uh, choice always being foremost in my mind is that it's their saddle. And like you said, they'll be having it for a lot of years, so it better suit them. 
But that plate rigging I found uh, actually it was an old Heiser saddle that I uh, brought up from Montana with me that had a plate rigging. And uh, it seemed like you could cinch looser uh, mm -hmm. to ride most of the, the day without having to keep that snugged up. Even on colts, it kind of wrap around them a little bit and sit down on them, their back better. Uh, so I like the p plate rigging, and I recommended it to you because I thought it'd suit you going uphill, downhill. And again, because you're doing everything from healing calves at brandings to roping big stock, sometimes by yourself. And uh, all, a lot of these little things make a big difference, especially when you're by yourself. It's sometimes not only a long walk home. If you get hurt, <laughs> it's, uh, it's not a good deal. Yeah, it seems to uh, yeah, it seems to fit a variety of horses better than the regular D ring D ring rigging that I have used, uh, and it uh, you don't have to pull it down quite as tight, and it it seems to stay in place. The blankets don't slide out from under it, and there's no dry spots when I take those blankets off. Well, that's great because uh, the the trees I'm using right now are uh, made by Rod Nickel, and he's I know he's really particular about getting the bar pattern to fit the horses back. But a lot of it has to do with putting that rigging in properly so it pulls uh, down on that tree properly. And that's what it should be. There shouldn't be any dry spots. It should fit. Uh, a variety of horses, it, you know, some real extremes, it won't fit really good on the one way or the other way. But in general, that's how a sh saddle should fit because most guys can't afford more than one uh, handmade saddle. So, you know, it, uh, it's better to be in the kind of in the middle of the road than go to extremes on one end yeah. or the other. Yeah. And then, of course, the tooling is something that really makes it unique. And I didn't want it really, really fancy, but I did want it distinctive. And boy, you did a job on that with that barbed wire pattern on there, and then the Spirit of the West logo on the seat jockeys, and our brand on the horn cap and on the uh, stirrup leathers and on the outside of the stirrups and uh, right down there in the bottom of the back cinch. A lot of people see that one. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> I, uh, Anybody I run over is going to look right <laughs> up. That's right. <laughs> I uh, uh, really enjoyed putting that. I got the stamp made up uh, specifically for you. I've seen the stamp uh, uh, one other time. I saw that stamp, and I happened to be down in Sheridan, Wyoming, to a leather trade show and saw the stamp, and I thought, that i got to get that to use on Hugh's saddle. And... Uh, and I knew you liked fencing so well that you kind of <laughs> wanted to see that barbed wire fairly, <laughs> fairly regular. So Well, you'll hear how I could not resist raising Bob's stress level. Actually, it was kind of a, a payback for something he pulled on me a number of years ago. But right now, this is contemporary music of the West at its very best. And it carries the passion for a special way of life that only a privileged few have been able to live. And the urban folks, I am sure, have no idea that this way of life still exists. Here's Bran Hill. Somewhere tonight on Big D Double L, you're watching the sun going down. And there's a chill coming on, and the fire is burning well. As you look out across hallowed ground, there's a coyote dancing along Mackie Giraffe. There's a golden hawk perched on the wire And there's a bed roll waiting for your head to fall As you stare deep into the campfire And I've been camped where you are And I've watched upon the same star And I would give every last penny Could be twenty in cowboy again. On an old Tex Tan saddle with no bucking rolls and a hand me down shank snaffle bit and a ride reata that's too long to hold. A pair of old chinks that don't fit and Seventeen miles from the highway across To the head of the summertime range And there's no one but you and the crew and the boss And there's nowhere to hide if it rains And I've been camped where you I 
could be 20 in Cowboy again My custom-made Bob Goffman saddle has beautiful tooling, as you heard, including a, de a depiction of my buckskin mare, Lucky, and the lettering that says, McLennan Ranch, home of the Spirit of the West. And then, uh, as far as I could tell, everything was spelt correctly, too, even though I had you going when you phoned me that night. <laughs> you made me, I tell you, when you phoned up and you, you said, uh, really good, but I'd spelled it wrong. I ran, I, I honestly I dropped the phone, <laughs> ran back to my uh, order book, and I looked it up, and I grabbed the template that I'd made the logo up on, and I looked at it, and no, it was right. So when I came back, I knew you were joshing, but boy, I was worried there for a while. <laughs> I thought I was just going to joke with you for a minute or two, and then the phone was blank. There's nobody, I, Bob, I'm only kidding. It was about five minutes before you got back. <laughs> yeah, I kind of, that's one of the times I panicked, I'll tell you. <laughs> Well, I think you had it coming. <laughs> yeah, that's probably right, because I could have fooled you in some ways, too. But <laughs> Well, you already did, once or twice. <laughs> yeah, actually, I remember at one time I phoned up and I said, uh, you know, there was a couple of guys that had tried your saddle already, and they really like it. If you wouldn't mind waiting for a little while, I could build you another one. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'll never forget the time that, uh, quite a few years ago, I this is before I got the saddle, I jackknifed uh, my stock trailer full of cows on a steep, windy mountain road, and uh, did a fair bit of damage to the truck and the trailer, but the cows were okay. And then Bob was on the phone posing as an insurance adjuster. <laughs> and uh, oh, he got me good that time. Anyway, uh, Bob shares some pretty spectacular cowboy adventures that he's had a little later. And next, Baxter Black wades in with some of his thoughts on purebred cattle breeders when the spirit of the West continues right after this. Howdy, friends. This is Baxter Black on Spirit of the West with Hugh McLennan with a little peek at having a blueprint somewhere. If your group or association is planning a meeting and are on a thrifty budget, check out Virtual Video Baxter. That's me. I'll video a personalized welcome, then furnish several humorous stories to run between your speakers. Sign books can be used as auction items. We've done rodeos, museums, bull sales, the conservation service, Use your imagination. Virtual Video Baxter. Give us a call, 800-654-2550 at baxterblack.com. It seems in all the distraction of high tech that purebred cattle have been buried under piles of often pointless minutia. Scholarly reports, discussions, pontifications, and predictions about tenderness, cutability, presentation, preparation, and efficiency proliferate like waves crashing on the giant seawall of the humble, confused commercial producer. There is so much information available that cow-calf men must feel like they're channel surfing through some endless cable cow network of total cow immersion, TCI. A big percentage of the analysis and speculation assumes that the meat industry must work with the multi-crossed, any-colored, hereditarily diverse, genetically unrecognizable, unreproducible steer that stumbles up the receiving chute at IBP. And that assumption is valid to a point. But selective genetics can move mountains. We as beef producers have not increased weaning weights 20 or 30 percent in the last 30 years by growing better grass. We've not steadily changed the weight per day of age or the lean-to-fat ratio by some magic injection. Improved feedlot performance is not the sole result of feed additives or growth promotants. 
the single biggest factor responsible for the practical improvement in the cattle we see today is genetics. Selective breeding has infused the cow population with the changes we see today. And to effect these changes required that we start with predictable traits in a cow and selectively improve them by mating with equally predictable bulls. These predictable qualities have been the responsibility of our purebred breeders, and they still are. Granted, purebred breeders can be narrow-minded. They can be traditional and protective, but it is they who have given the cattle industry the engine and the running gear. We can fuel them with higher octane, and we can paint the outside a different color, but if the basic machinery doesn't perform, you might as well paint racing stripes on a Ford Pinto. The strength of the purebred business lies in being able to supply reliable, reproducible traits. It's the cattle industry's safeguard against mongrel genetics. Like Coca-Cola, somebody's got to have a copy of the original formula. This is Baxter Black on Spirit of the West with Hugh McLennan. Thanks for listening. For over 40 years, Northlands in Edmonton has hosted Farm Fair International, one of Canada's top agricultural shows, where thousands of guests come to the Edmonton Expo Center to show and sell top quality livestock. November the 8th to 12th, Farm Fair International is proud to welcome international buyers from the Commonwealth of Independent States, European Union, Latin America, North America, Oceania, and South America, in addition to local ranchers. Enjoy a wide variety of Western entertainment, including stock dog trials, the Heritage Ranch Rodeo, and more. Get tickets and information at farmfairinternational.com. A couple of rodeo legends have ridden across the Great Divide in the last while, Harry Vold, and most recently, Winston Bruce. And Ivan Danes, many-time saddle bronc champion and guy who knows everybody in the country music industry, has an amazing gift for writing a song and getting it recorded very quickly. And that's what he's done with this tribute to those two giants of rodeo and ranching. There's a sad breeze blowing across the rodeo sheet. We think of the friends and loved ones that somehow bring a tear. Their memories and stories we've all told so many times. I feel compelled to tell about two great ones that were so fine. Harry Bold was bigger than life, much laughter and few fears. The Bronx and Bulls were the best in the world, year after year. He started trailing Bronx to the Pinocchio Stampede. Great auctioneer, Colorado rank stretch far as the eyes can see. He started in life in Forestburg on the eastern Alberta plains. Father Lawrence, great buck and stock, his savvy brought in fame. Young Winston learned to ride so great, just a youngster in rodeo. Everyone knew he'd be great someday, all he had to do was go. He became world champ and Canadian champ in the saddle bronc riding game. Compared to Casey Tibb, Champ Deb, Marty Wood, Kenny McLean. When he quit bronc riding, he was a head boss of the Calgary Stampede. Started raising buck and horses so great, their bloodlines we still see. Now we stand in honor of these two great famous men. Harry Bold and Winston Bruce we'll never see again. But they both left their mark on life for all of us to see. I guess you would say they were the kind of man helped keep our spirits free. I guess you could say they were the kind of man helped keep our spirits free. Now the news of the rangeland, a roundup of news and coming events from around the West. At the top of page one here, it says, safety of young people continues to be a big concern on farms and ranches in the U.S. and Canada. 
And Gary Crawford has this report. Working on farms used to be the second most dangerous occupation behind mining, but now it's moved up to number one. And it's also the only work site in the United States where children of any age can be present. And Marcia Soswittle with the National Farm Medicine Center says kids are usually banned for most job sites anyway, but young people can not only be working on a farm, but living and playing there. And so we've got kids of all ages in a possibly dangerous environment. The result? There is a child or a youth that dies in an egg-related incident about every three days. And every day there's about 33 children that are seriously injured in an agricultural-related incident. Sixty percent of those fatalities are kids under 10 years old, and she says... Tractors are responsible for almost half of the fatalities of young children on farms. And so while it may be a tradition to give the kids a ride on these tractors, it's a very dangerous one. She says that extra seat that some tractors have won't protect a child, and accident reports show even tractors with cabs are not safe for young kids. Gary Crawford for the U.S. Department of Agriculture, Washington. So how much does it cost to apply that Roundup to the fields? Well, the cost of that might be going up. German drugs and pesticides group Bayer said it was now likely to be early next year before it can complete its uh, $66 billion U.S. deal to acquire uh, the U.S. uh, company Monsanto, and that's later than expected and later than previously predicted. The European Commission has been scrutinizing the proposed takeover with a deadline of January the 8th, but Bayer said in a statement that it had asked the regulator for an extension of the investigation to January 22nd, to which the uh, European Union Commission responded by saying it would take a decision shortly. The commission last month started an in-depth investigation of the takeover, saying it was worried about competition in various pesticide and seeds markets. The Canadian Cattle on Feed Survey shows feedlots in two provinces, Alberta and Saskatchewan. As of last month, the on-feed count was up 5.3%. That's about 30,500 head year over year. And that was similar to the prior five-year average. Both animals marketed by feedlots and placed on feed have been above a year ago for several consecutive months. And recently, declining feeder animal exports to the U.S. have increased supplies available in western Canada. And further to that, drought bolstered placements of animals during August as yearling animals came off grasslands much earlier than normal. And while the Alberta cow herd has stopped shrinking, it hasn't yet rebounded back. And where do most of the cattle go for summer grazing? Well, the positive returns for the cow-calf producers over the last few years indicates that the Alberta cow herd has finally stopped shrinking, says Herman Simons, farm business management specialist with Alberta Agriculture and Forestry. In fact, the total beef cow numbers for 2016 show a small increase of about 13,500 head as compared to 2011. The largest reduction in cows since the 2006 census inventory was in the Edmonton-Calgary Corridor in 2011, and since then this region has rebounded somewhat, while the northeast and west have continued to shrink in total numbers of cows. And the number of farms is uh, reducing in Alberta. This decline seems to be faster for the beef sector in Alberta as compared for the average of all Canadian farms. There was a reduction of just over 10% of Alberta cow-calf producers in 2016 from 2011 as compared to the Canadian average of about 6% for the same period for all farms. Well, we did something recently that we have never done before. We took our calves to the BC Livestock Co-op sale. Well, we've done that many times. Uh, But we were just too darn busy to get down there for the Tuesday sale. We hauled them on Monday morning. But I logged on to the BC Livestock Co-op website, bclivestock.bc.ca. And it was amazing. We proudly watched our calves go through the ring while we had lunch in front of the computer. And you can watch all of their sales online at that website, bclivestock.bc.ca. Meanwhile, over at the Innisfail Auction Market, Pre-sort sales are underway, calves are sorted on Sundays and sold on Monday, and you can book your calves ahead of time by calling 1-800-710-3166. Regular cattle sales every Wednesday and two horse sales a month. For more information, see InnisvaleAuctionMarket.com. 
And I guess we're down to the final item, and I'm not sure where this bit of history came from, but apparently, a hundred years ago, nearly everyone owned at least one horse. But only the wealthiest people had cars. And today, almost everyone owns at least one vehicle. But only the wealthiest people own horses. But <laughs> if you own horses, you might not be wealthy for too long. Anyway, that's the Rangeland News. Coming up on the Urban Saddles and Western Wear Horse Training File, some of the valuable information I picked up a few years ago at the Horseman's Reunion in Paso Robles, California. And then more from Bob Kaufman when the Spirit of the West continues right after this. Welcome back to the Spirit of the West. Coming right up on the Urban Saddles and Western Wear Horse Training File, some of the very interesting tips I picked up watching folks like Jonathan Field, Martin Black, Buster McClory, Chris Cox, and others starting colts at the Horseman's Reunion in California a while back. First, though, the 17th Annual Spirit of the West Cruise will be something unforgettable. My wife, Billy, and I will be hosting a big group of ranchers, farmers, horse and cattle folks, and Spirit of the West listeners for a trip I know many of you have had on your bucket list for a long time. September 16th, 2018, we will sail out of Quebec City and cruise Canada's maritime provinces in all the glory of the fall colors, including stops in Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island, Sydney and Halifax, Nova Scotia, St. John, New Brunswick and the Bay of Fundy, Bar Harbor, Maine, Boston, Portland, Maine and Cape Liberty, New Jersey with an optional stay in New York City. Now, just for the Spirit of the West group, we have a tour of a cattle operation in Nova Scotia. We'll have all our great Western music concerts and sing-alongs, and we'll be swapping lots of ranching stories. And we'll have a lot of special activities just for our group. You'll find more details on the cruise section of our website at hugh mclennancom and on our cruise Facebook page, and you can always call the toll-free number 1-800-530-0131. And here's some big news. The music for our onboard concerts and sing-alongs will really be great. Just found out that Uncle Mike, our great bass player and guitar player with our Western Spirit Band, is going to be on board. And our cabin allotment is nearly sold out, so give Jim and, a, Jim and Karen a call as soon as you can if you'd like to be part of the game. Now it's time for the horse training file, brought to you by Irvine Tack and Western Wear, Canada's largest Western store. Well, it's not frozen flagpole kind of cold just yet, <laughs> but it's getting chilly out there. Good to know Urban Tack and Western Wear has over 70,000 square feet of everything you need this fall. Boots, jeans, shirts, hoodies, jackets, and hey, it's always fun shopping Urban's. You should see the new fall decor and collectibles, and well, the longer I go on, the less time you have to shop, so I'd best be on my way. To Urban's, of course, off exit 305 on Highway 2 by Crossfield, open seven days a week. Canada's largest Western store. It was at the Horseman's Reunion in 2013 at Paso Robles, California, where Billy and I celebrated our 50th anniversary. And now what's more romantic than watching top hands starting good colts in the California sun for five days? And that's where we met Buster McClurry and his wife Cheryl for the first time. I've admired them for a long time, and I'd like to share some of the wisdom Buster passed on from his own experience uh, and uh, some of the other hands. When you really hurry a horse or cow, you just get to the wrong place faster. A horse has to be straight to stop and has to stop before he can turn around. If a horse isn't smart enough to know the difference between roping and cutting, you're not going to win anything on him anyway. That's from the great Matlock Rose. The first time you ride a horse, he'll cost you money. The second time, he'll hold his own. The third time, he's on the payroll. The great Ray Hunt. There's a lot of difference between holding a roundup and just sitting between the cows and on the back side of the pasture. And that's from Buster. I can tell a good cowboy by the way he approaches a cow. From Henry Green. A cow has to have time to think and room to turn around. And where uh, understanding and communication end, violence begins. And a herd of cattle ought to leave the roundup ground the same way as they leave the bed ground, paired up and walking. And there are a lot of good times to 
give a horse a good leaving alone. That's from Buster again. And for Urban Saddles and Western Wear, that's the horse training file. And another one I'll share with you. That daily feeding of Hoffman's horse ration sure keeps our horses feeling good and looking good. Find out more at hoffmanshorseration.com. For over 40 years, Northlands in Edmonton has hosted Farm Fair International, one of Canada's top agricultural shows, where thousands of guests come to the Edmonton Expo Center to show and sell top quality livestock. November the 8th to 12th, Farm Fair International is proud to welcome international buyers from the Commonwealth of Independent States. European Union, Latin America, North America, Oceania, and South America, in addition to local ranchers. Enjoy a wide variety of Western entertainment, including stock dog trials, the Heritage Ranch Rodeo, and more. Get tickets and information at farmfairinternational.com. The very popular group Cowboy Celtic with David Wilkie, Denise, and the others have released a new CD called The Key of Joy. I thought you'd like this one, the beautiful voice of Denise Withnall on Cowgirl Lullaby. Underneath the moonlit prairie sky A cowgirl sings a lonely lullaby Like a coyote queen She has got to sing when she cries But wide and open spaces are too wide Tonight, tonight, tonight Ride and drag and rounding up the
When saddle maker Bob Kaufman and I got together a while back to talk mainly about the saddle he built for me, as usual, our conversation got around to some cowboy adventures and the wisdom of dally roping as opposed to the questionable practice of tying hard and fast. And uh, it was just amazing. Uh, you don't tend to, I guess, lose your fingers that way. But I'll tell you what, it's sure a jerk on a horse. Oh, and, yeah. And uh, it's quite different. Uh, uh, you, I could see where you can get in a real wreck being tied hard and fast like that. <laughs> well, I ride with a few fellows that have uh, spent a lot of time down there. And uh, that's the first thing I noticed when we started to ride out up in this part of the country is every one of them had a horn loop on yeah. the rope and it was tied to the horn. And that's the way they've always done it, you know, which I, I have never done that. No. <laughs> I've always dallied. But well, I guess I did, uh, oh, when I was in Montana still, before I moved up here to Canada, uh, I tied hard and fast the first little while, especially on a colt. But yeah. I had a colt to jerk right down off his feet one time, and I decided that maybe wasn't a good idea. And you were still tied on. Oh, yeah, I was still tied on, and it was just a good thing I bailed out of there just yeah. as he uh, tipped over there. So, uh, But after that, I started dally roping, and I... Uh, prefer to dally rope for by far now. Yeah. 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 Well, for I do for a number of reasons, and uh, the one story that really opened my eyes was a friend of mine said that, and this still happened in Texas. Uh, he roped a good size husky yearling steer, tied hard and fast, and this steer was pretty darn wild. And uh, he was riding a mare that was a filly that was pretty green, and he didn't want to jerk real hard, so he kind of kept up with the steer, and he thought he'd just sort of slow him down a little bit. Well, the steer jumped a barbed wire fence oh. <laughs> and was dragging this filly right to the fence. Uh, pocket knife come out pretty quick to cut the rope. <laughs> yeah, you bet. Yeah, you can get in some real wrecks. Yeah. No, I've never, mm, never, like I say, I never wanted that much adventure, you know. And they say, well, I've never lost a rope. And uh, when the wreck settles and the dust clears, well, your horse and that cow and your rope are usually still together somewhere. But... Boy, that'd be hard on a brand new saddle too, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh, gee, yeah, some of that can be definitely hard. It, it'll test the rigging, that's for sure. Yeah, I think I'd sacrifice my rope to save my saddle. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. I think a $50 rope is not that big of an investment nowadays. Yeah. That was a great visit. I still love that saddle. And uh, you can see some fine pictures of the, the beautiful work that Bob does. Just go to bobkaufmansaddles.com. And Kaufman is K-A-U-F-M-A-N. BobKaufmanSaddles.com. Coming up, we'll take you back to a classic song of the West and then North Dakota ranch wife Yvonne Hollenbeck in the Cowboy Poetry Spotlight when the Spirit of the West continues right after this. Welcome back to the Spirit of the West. For this week's classic song of the West, this one is still a favorite with those who regret the passing of the Western music era. It was first used in the Charles Starrett Western movie Cattle Raiders, and even today the song brings a sense of weariness and loss. Loss of good friends, happier times, freedom, and it's often used to close a program of Western music. It was recorded by the Sons of the Pioneers for RCA Victor and for radio transcriptions, and the song has been recorded by many other artists, and possibly Ken Curtis's rendition is maybe the most plaintive of all, but... Uh, the recording for RCA in 1957, the one you're going to hear, uh, with Bob Nolan reciting the last two verses, is to me the most moving. The song was registered for copyright on February 16, 1938, and the sheet music was included in Bob Nolan's folio of original cowboy classics number one in 1939. This week's classic Song of the West, This Ain't the Same Old Rain. This ain't the same old race. I see my old pals where the bright moon climbs 
Rounding up the shooting stars that stray sometimes They brand them right and tie them tight So they just can't fall To some far place in empty space To ne'er be found at all Was just beyond that little knoll Bill Cody fell And I still can hear him calling He yes, howdy Bill And there he stands A vision to my tired eyes And he asked me if I'd like to join The riders in the skies This ain't the same old range Everything seems to change There have been a few relationships started on social media in the last while, Facebook and other places. I guess that's kind of a digital version of the classified ads we see in some agricultural publications. And Yvonne Hollenbeck has a poem about a gal from the country who was very lonely in the city. She was lonely in a city, in a life she'd learned to hate. And she thought that it would help if she could find herself a mate. For weeks she checked the classifieds, the lonely people kind, looking for the type of man that she would like to find. Alas, she happened on one that really caught her eye and she knew at once that this would be the perfect kind of guy. The ad read he was lonely and looking for a wife, one who liked to cook and would enjoy his country life. It said he lived alone on a large Wyoming spread heart began to flutter from this ad that she just read. Romance began to blossom as they courted through the mail, and both began to thinking that this match could never fail. She caught a train to Casper. It's a good thing it was night, because vision isn't good in a railway station light. And you know how you can visualize a body and a face, and when you finally meet them, you were really way off base? Well, she'd seen him in the movies and all those western scenes, and the image of a cowboy had for years been in her dreams. Why, even cowboy poets like Baxter, Jess, and Pat are tall and dark and handsome. But this dude was short and fat. He had a big potato nose, a red and runny eye, and the cowboy she had dreamed of was a far cry from this guy. But there's a lid for every kettle and there's soup for every pot cause a fancy classy city gal was something she was not. She weighed at least 400 pounds. Most her teeth were gone. As he looked her up and down, he got to thinking something's wrong. But she'd come this far to meet him so he'd best give her the test to see how well she'd like it on his ranch out in the west. The station agent told me that it was really quite a sight with him wedged into his pickup headed out into the night. And as you might imagine, it must have been a thrill when he told her that his home was waiting round that distant hill. But she must have been surprised when he finally came to stop before a wooden wagon with a rounded canvas top. She asked him where his house was and he answered, this is it although he was concerned as to whether she would fit. Now many days have come and gone and they make a happy pair, although they both were fooled, but neither seems to care. But they learned a real good lesson and I hope you have learned one too, about the ads you happen on, to check them through and through. Just because a man's a rancher does not mean he punches cows. He might live on a hog ranch picking out some sows. And every city gal don't always come with savoir faire. She might just be a country hick that's stuck a living there. 
So be careful of the classifieds. You better look before you leap, or you could end up in Wyoming in some wagon herding sheep. Well, thank you so much for riding along this week, and I sure hope you can be here right here next week at the same time for more of that special music, interesting stories, and much, much more. Thanks again to the Spirit of the West support crew, Mark and Kathy McMillan. If you're looking for tractor parts, any make, any year, see Mark's page, bctractorparts.com. And man, I just can't wait to see the restoration job he's doing on a couple of classic tractors right now. Lots of great reading in every issue of Canadian Cowboy Country Magazine. You can subscribe online at cowboycountrymagazine.com or give them a call at 1-800-943-7336. Till next week, I am Hugh McLennan. Hope to see you down the trail somewhere real soon. <laughs>